and gentlemen, you're more than welcome to yet another episode. This is episode 81 of the Coffee at 11 show brought to you by wigwam.ie SME peer support. And uh, lovely to have you here joining us this morning. Beautiful Monday morning that it is. In particular, I'm delighted to welcome a special guest this morning, Roisin Meany, author. And Roisin, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Please say hello and show us that lovely coffee mug. Hello, hello, Colm, and hello, everyone else, and thank you so much for having me. I was really honoured to be asked, and uh, yeah, my mug. <laughs> I was commenting earlier that uh, there's a beautiful correlation in colours there between uh, the mug and your and your your top. Well done. Yeah, very deliberate, very deliberate. <laughs> Which uh, for Cathy <laughs> Mera is Irish for hadn't even thought of it till you said it. <laughs> wonderful stuff Roshi it's been a pleasure having you in the cafe thank you for joining us thank you very much everybody thank you it's been lovely fun. I can't believe the time is up already no no no, no. So, so we're, we're, it's not you see we're not letting you off the hook we're just taking a new direction here for a moment if that's okay yeah that's this, fine this is part of our plot you see this is part of our plot so look um, uh, we're going to go to Q&A from the floor in just a moment if you don't mind before we do Roshi and Meany, is there something that you're taking with you from COVID that you've enjoyed and you don't really want to let go? Well, I, I'd say this is probably something that a lot of people would feel, that I loved the slowing down of life in COVID. I absolutely loved it. I loved the peace and the no cars and the time that people had. Now, I'm aware that I live alone. Well, me and Fred the cat. And it's very quiet in my house. There are no children. I didn't have to homeschool. I didn't have to, you know, sort dinners for a family. So I'm sure other people had very different experiences. But I think for everyone, there was that slowing down of time, enforced slowing down of time in some cases. But um, life just moved on a slower track. And I would love, I would love if we could retain some of that as we go forward. But unfortunately, I think we're already really losing it. I mean, the cars cars are back on the road, the people are coming out again, the shops are open. And I know it all had to come back, all of that had to come back. But if we could just hang on to some of that slow, that slow time, um, and that lovely, that lovely start that we had with the meditation from Eamon was just, it just brought me back to that kind of slow time that we, that we all enjoyed. And I did more yoga then too, and it, that's kind of gone by the wayside too, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing it myself. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are more than welcome to another episode. This is episode 82, can't believe it, of the Coffee at 11 show, brought to you by wigwam.ie SME peer support. Delighted to have you join us here this morning for a very special uh, episode of the show. And that's because the person in the hot seat is my dad, my dad, Tommy O'Brien, the legend that is. So, dad, you're very welcome. Please say hello to us all and show us your coffee mug. Thank you. Thanks, Callum, indeed. Lovely to be with you all, and I wish you all well. How about that for a coffee mug? Tell me your brother singing in Grafton Street. <laughs> Listen, Dad, I want to get into your poetry, if you wouldn't mind. Um, would you mind reading us a poem? So, this poem is about Colm's eldest child, Shona, and it's called Shona's Braces. Braces were things when I was a chap for to hold up my trousers with a kind of a strap. Four holes in the front with buttons that embrace, they cross at the back to keep them in place. We never asked questions, but this is the way we held up our trousers. What more can I say? Till along came a belt, a strap made of plastic. No sooner than done, when they put in elastic. The world has went wild with this new fancy look. Trousers all neat without any tuck. They fit like a glove, all neat round the waist. Braces were gone, removed with great haste. However, my granddaughter, Shona so sweet, said she's got braces put onto her teeth. I said, you are joking, are they falling about? Oh no, she said, Granddad, it's to straighten them out. I still couldn't fathom, or was I just dumb? Braces were for trousers and not for the gum. How on earth could she start to put them in place? Sure, the whole thing is mad, she'll be a disgrace. So down I went to fair Limerick City, this granddaughter of mine to hug and to pity. As she opened her mouth, I tried to admire but just couldn't do it. She had a mouth full of wear. She said it was tough on her trying to eat. The feeling was strange from her head to her feet. With barbed wire for breakfast, dinner and tea, 
you'd be all torn to pieces. It just baffled me. But when we sat down and started to talk, and I listened and learned and didn't balk about this procedure, this revolutionary fangle that would put back in place those teeth at an angle. Strange though it was, it seemed to be working, despite the weird thoughts in my mind that were lurking. She braved it all through two years of endurance, her prize though well worth it, nice teeth her insurance. I look at her now, a queen to behold, though she's only 17 years old. She's tall, fair and gentle, nothing dark, nothing shady, a granddaughter I'm proud of, a gorgeous young lady. Rapturous silent applause all around uh, all around the world, actually, a truly international audience this morning. Yeah. Listen, thanks, thanks for that, Dad. Um, you have your guitar with you, and Eamon Smith is going to put up, come here, he's blaming Tom Murphy for introducing him to the Ma, right? Wait till you see the Ma. The Ma was Bride of the Month in June 1961. Oh, Wait yeah. Now, nothing wrong with that, like? There you are now. Right. Who couldn't fall for that lady? There you go. So that's... That's the man, 1961. Eamon, thank you for that. You can leave that up. Dad, would you sing The Ring's End Rose for us, will you? Oh, yeah. There's the backdrop. And Eamon, we'll hold on to that last picture that I spoke about for a few moments, if that's okay. So when this is finished, take that one down, if you don't mind. Thank you, Eamon. So introduce the song there, Dad. Well, uh, Pete St. John wrote this. He wrote The Fields of Athenry, of course. I was telling your lady friend there, sorry, earlier, that Don and I spent our honeymoon in the Fields of Athenry. <laughs> First night in Athens, right? We spent our first one night in honeymoon. But Pete, Pete St. John wrote the song, My Rings and Rose. Apparently, he fancied this girl and she didn't fancy him. This is a true story, but pretty well, I mightn't have all the detail. But, and anyway, but when he was trying to court the daughter, he had to meet the mother. And uh, I think the mother fancied him more than the daughter did. Now, there was nothing untoward going on, by the way. Anyway, it's called My Rings and Rose. There's a little chorus to it, you might know it, you've joined in. Dublin town, there lived a girl, fairer than the flower I'm wearing, rose down a hoop, all fresh and new, and I love her past. Look here, and there she goes, my rings and rows, in God's garden there's none rarer, and there she goes, my rings and rows, Dublin town has seen. And fairer, sweet setting, my seamstress queen, she's no bigger than a thimble, soft satin skin, street Arabs grin, and she makes the work look simple. And there she goes, my rings and rose. In God's garden there's none rarer. And there she goes, my rings and rose. Dublin town has seen no fear. Three yards of lace, she walks with grace, and a golden ring, she's asking, a save and slow, ah, but still I know, that our love is ever custom, and there she goes. 
my rings and rows in God's garden there's none rarer and there she goes my rings and rows Dublin town has seen no fairer Dublin town has seen one more song that Uncle John introduced you to. Would you mind? And then we'll 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 go to to, to Shelley for comment if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so here's Dad and his four brothers, right? On the oh yes, yes, yes. This is in uh, my brother Jer's house uh, some years back, and what you have there is uh, the five O'Brien brothers, my, my Dad and his four. And uh, they're going from uh, right to left on your screen, uh, anti-clockwise, if you like, in terms of eldest, second eldest, and so on, youngest off to the left. And then Carol is the eldest in our family, then yours truly, Jer in the middle, Patricia, and then the baby Donal over the far side. So I just thought that was a lovely photograph. Yeah, I leave that for a minute, Carl. Yeah, we're going to leave that picture, if you wouldn't mind, Dad, because uh, Uncle John introduced you to a particular Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was five of us in the family, and... Um... You know, we all were different, of course. Stephen, the was the eldest, he went to South Africa for 17 years. The next that below uh, column is my brother John, whom I was very friendly with. We were pals. He emigrated to England uh, 60 years ago, uh, but I still visited him and lived in Wales. He married the Welsh girl. The next that is Fran. He's a professional singer, and Jer's above him. And then next is myself and Patricia above me there. And then the next is my son, other brother, Michael. He went to Canada 30 years ago, and Don was behind him. So uh, John, behind Colum, or below Colum there, he and I were very close. And uh, Sunday Miscellany and uh, John Bowman, he said, Thomas, did you hear that song? Did you hear Sister John? What did you hear the man's the story today? I heard a great song. So not long, John died, Lord of him last year. And um, just before he died, maybe uh, two months before that, he ran me one day, see, I was in the car today. I'd be Thomas to the family. Thomas just says, I heard, I heard a song. He says, I think, I think you'd like it. And so, um, so, of course, when he told me what it was, I listened to it. Um, and Willie, Willie Nelson and Kemi Rhodes, uh, the father of two famous American, American folk singers and, ballad and singer-songwriters. It's called uh, I Always Go the Other Way. And when I'm entertaining the young folk, I say, by the way, I don't know where you're all from. But whatever you're from, I'm sure whenever you go back to your home place, you always say, oh gosh, that's, there's the house I was reared in, or there was a little shop down the road, or there was a forge down there, or whatever it was. So this car song is called, I always go the other way, and I always dedicate to my brother John. I always go the other way But my car drove me down today The little house The older side of town Like when things were never hard I used to play there in that yard So I just drove by to See if things had changed Hope was just a nickel then Across the street in the five and ten Things were very strange and cheap and fair And the life that we had might have been But it was one we all loved believing in So I just strolled by to see if things had changed I wondered now if love is still the way it was back then I need to know that life is still a place worth living in And there it is, just like it was A house where there was always love So I just drove by to see if things had changed <laughs> In a world that's seen its better days It's nice to know some things never change 
For standing still is surely not life's way. So take to heart while it is spring, for love is still a fragile thing. So as you stroll by, see if things have changed. I wondered now if love is still the way it was back then. I need to know that life is still a place worth living in. And there it is, just like it was, a house for those always love. So I just stroll by, see if things have changed. So I just stroll by to see if things have changed. Gentlemen, you are more than welcome to this, the 83rd episode of the Cognitive 11 Show, brought to you by wigwam.ie SME Peer Support. Delighted to have in the hot seat this morning as my special guest, good friend for many years, and the rock behind the Coffee at 11 Show, our Editor-in-Chief, Miss Katrina O'Brien. Katrina, you are more than welcome. Please say hello. Show us your coffee mug. Good morning, everybody. In case anyone forgets my name, there it is. And a little instruction for you today. Echoing Shelley, sing out loud. Excuse the lipstick. It's my trademark. Listen, uh, great stuff. Uh, great stuff. Lo lovely conversation. And thank you for coming to join us. Um, have to ask you, what are you taking from COVID? And before I do that, before I do that, um, I just want to thank you for being part of the Coffee at 11 show. The uh, idea started. Uh, there was no plan. As you know, we just jumped into this thing. Rather, I jumped into this thing. And you know, a handful of people, Katrina included, obviously Katrina, Eamon and Shelley, uh, put their hands up. Or maybe we were press gangs that will come out at some point in the future. But anyway, they we found they found themselves with something to do uh, in relation to the Coffee Eleven show, and we could not have done it without each other. But in particular, Katrina O'Brien would put in a full hard day at the office and then go home, have the dinner, very important, because I'd say you're a bit like me. You probably get hangry. Do you get hangry? I do. <laughs> I might let my family answer that one. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Sean, you're coming in for the conversation in a moment on that one, right? Good stuff. Uh, okay. So, uh, so she's sweetness and light all the time, obviously. Uh, but once you get past your dinner, then you get stuck into the editing, which, you know, at times has taken several hours. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, and of course, it's, it's, it's there forever. So we really appreciate all of what you've done for the Coffee at 11 show. It's a piece of history, a piece of history. So thank you for that, Katrina. Okay. What are you taking from COVID? Well, we spoke about this at lunch and I'm delighted to say that my interview is before columns because I get to answer first and say some new friends because I have made new friends in lockdown, which I never would have thought possible and proper friends, like not just hi and in two months later, I'm like, who? Proper friends that I'm going to keep. And secondly, a new skill um, with the editing, which I had done a little bit in the past for column but not regularly and not in a long while. And when he asked me to do this, I was like, yeah, sure. And I had to quick refresher and away, but have learned so much more and have brought it into my day job as well, because while the shop was closed, we couldn't have events. Um, so I spoke to Colette and I said, I'd like to do something. Firstly, while the shop is closed to remind remind our customers that we're here so I got the staff together over zoom and we had just a chat about books and we put that out on Facebook and YouTube etc and we did a couple of those and it's like I want to I want to take this further so myself and another colleague would take it in turns and we would interview an author and film that and edit it and put it out and so there's a few of those out there now and then Colette was like well you know we have two authors that were scheduled for book launches why don't we do something so um, we did the first two virtual book launches and we heard back from Hachette who Roisin mentioned and they're one of the biggest publishers and she, the rep for Hachette said we are the only bookshop doing anything like this online and that made me very proud. I did. Because it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened only for this, you know, I don't think. We would have had to do something completely different. So yeah, I'm delighted. So those are what I'm taking. A new skill and new friends. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
welcome everybody to the penultimate show, show 84, Coffee at 11 show. Myself and Colm have switched roles today because he has agreed on demand to be in the hot seat. So I have taken over the reins for today. So on the penultimate show brought to you by wigwam.ie SME peer support. Good morning, Colm. Show us your coffee mug. And a very good morning, one and all. And Katrina, thanks very much indeed for uh, for agreeing to swap seats today. We're very excited about today. A bit nervous, but very excited. So, let's launch everybody. So, I'm going to go to Q and A in a minute with Princess Shelley. But before I do, so, like, what are you, what else are you bringing from COVID? Because you know you've already mentioned some things. Forgive me for not answering your question. I'm sorry, I went off on one. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, I'm bringing longer hair. Right, this is bringing me back 40 years. My mother is throwing rise up to heaven there. Can you just see it? She remembers, uh, my dad used to say to me, you're not going for a haircut, you're going to get a quote. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was that long. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was fun. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, the, the hair has grown. Um, uh, I'm, so I'm taking longer hair with me. I'm taking really good friendships with me. I'm taking precious memories with me from COVID. I'm taking uh, the fact that I was too busy before COVID with me. Uh, I'm taking the fact that I've always hated driving and that's, you know, I'm so happy with Zoom these days. Like, I'm going to Zoom as much as I can. I'd sooner Zoom than Vroom, right? And uh, I just, you know, dr driving just does, does nothing for me. I had uh, two meetings um, that were, uh, well, actually one meeting in Dublin some weeks back. And it took me two and a half hours to drive up there for an hour and a half meeting, two and a half, hour, half hours to get back. And that would have been done in 45 minutes on Zoom. Um, so I'm taking the fact that the world has been um, trained by COVID that Zoom is a very effective way to do business. Is it as effective as face-to-face, belly-to-belly? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. It doesn't matter what I think because I'm 57. It's what the 27-year-olds think because this is setting them up for the future, right? This is setting them up for the future. They don't know belly-to-belly -belly stuff. So I'm very excited about what COVID uh, has brought into my life and what I'm going to take with me. I'm nervous though. I'm also nervous. I'm feeling for people. Went over to the lakeside yesterday, genuinely, the Willis Hotel, genuinely to see could we actually get this event to happen on the 25th. Uh, we decided not to uh, use Alan's place simply because he's got an adult only po policy. We wanted people who wanted to bring children to go there. Um, so we were respecting that. When I went to the lakeside yesterday, they started talking to me about the fact that the restrictions were unlikely to be lifted. And it was the first time I heard it because I don't watch the news and I don't read the newspaper. Dad will confirm that one to you, right? I haven't done for 25 years. And uh, so when I heard that, I was really disappointed. Then I got sad because I was thinking so many people's livelihoods are on the floor at this moment in time. And that is a challenge. And at some point, it will become critical. And that's the part that I'm hoping we can somehow resolve sooner rather than later and we just trust in the universe and hopefully so long as we get through it alive and well the rest we can fix as somebody said years ago if your problems are only financial you don't have problems that said it's easy to say if you know if you're not on the floor and uh, so i'm feeling for everybody um looking forward to a, a time post COVID for sure <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are more than welcome to this, the 85th and last show of Series 1 of the Coffee at 11 show. I'm delighted that you've chosen to journey with us and join us here for the last episode in Series 1, uh, brought to you by wigwam.ie SME Peer Support. Delighted in particular that we've got a very special guest in the room today, a lady that I've known and been a fan of for some years now, and that is Sinead Kane. Dr. Sinead Kane, you are more than welcome to the cafe and the Coffee at 11 show. Would you please say hello and show us your coffee mug, please? Well, thanks very much for having me, and this is my coffee mug. Um, there's a small story behind it, so I can explain that. Um, can you all see it? We, we can, and it's fabulous. Yeah. Explain, the, explain the mug to us there, straight off the bat. Yeah, so this coffee mug is from the National Ambulance Service. So um, last October, myself and my run coach, we were invited to do a team talk for the National Ambulance Service and we talked about what winning teams do differently. And I suppose I feel privileged looking back now 
the fact that I got to talk to the National Ambulance Service when the amount of work that they've done over the last number of months, I was talking to them about what winning teams do differently and about adversity and overcoming challenges and little did any of us know in the room at that time that they would be the firefighters and they would be the people really trying to extinguish this fire that we're trying to deal with in terms of COVID-19 and I could learn so much from him and it just on reflection it just feels enormous privilege so throughout my COVID experience there has been a lot of days where there might have been down days or there might have been a lot of worry and fear through the news and we all go to make a cup of tea every single day and on those days when I'd be feeling down or worried because of too much bad information on the news the minute I'd open up the press and take out that cup that fear would just seem to dissipate because it would remind me something as simple as a cup reminded me that I'm in safe hands because I had those people and I had known that they really want to take care of us so I suppose that's the big learning curve for me from COVID-19 is that something as simple as a cup can take away your worry. Ah, Sinead Kane, the Bula bus has started already around the globe uh, for that. That was just a superb, beautiful introduction. Thank you for that. And you've made it very simple and very real for us. Sinead, it's been a joy. I'm going to ask you to tell a quick story, if you don't mind. And then we're going to go to Q&A from the floor. Um, two things before we go to Q&A from the floor or comment from the floor, please. Number one, you mentioned you got scared Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, this lady actually got scared of, the, of running in the Atacama Desert. And so she went for a swim the day before she was getting the flight to sort of calm the nerves. Will you I tell us that story? That I, told, I forgot that I told you this story. This is a story that I told you maybe four years ago. So you seem to have a very good memory because we haven't been talking about this story recently. But um, yeah, so basically... Um, uh, I went and I did the Volcano Marathon in 2015. And like I was panicking before going because all I could think of oh I'm going near a volcano so I was thinking to myself okay like look I won't bother going and I think we all need to do stuff to relax ourselves when we're feeling stressed so what I did the day before I flew out was I went swimming into in a swimming pool in the hotel so I was in the swimming pool swimming away by myself visually impaired and this man came up swimming beside me and he sounded very much like Bertie Ahern so I was kind of saying to myself, oh, well, to make conversation with this guy, would it be a compliment or an insult to tell him that he sounds like Bertie Ahern? So if for anybody who doesn't know Bertie Ahern, that's our former uh, Taoiseach a few many years ago. And um, so I, anyway, I just said, oh, like, look, I hope you don't mind me saying, but you sound very much like Bertie Ahern. I don't know whether you want to take that as a compliment or an insult. So then he turned around and said, well, that's because I am Bertie Ahern. So that made it very, very awkward. And um, so I'm very rarely left speechless. But in that kind of instance, I was kind of saying to myself, OK, what do I do now? I do not have a clue what to do. Think, think, think. Um, so I just said the first thing that came into my head and I kind of said, are you enjoying your swimming? And then um, just try to break the ice. And then he kind of said, oh, um, what, uh, do you come to the pool often? And all this, I was like, I cannot believe this is happening, talking, networking with Bertie Ahern in a pool. So uh, then well, um, he said, oh, what are you up to tomorrow? And then I kind of said, oh, I'm flying out to do a volcano marathon run. So it just kind of seemed all very, um, just not real. But, uh, very, yeah. very, very surreal, but a brilliant story. I couldn't, I couldn't let you uh, get away with it, tell that story. Fabulous, fabulous human story. Okay, listen. We're going to go to comment from the floor in just a second, Sinead, and it really has been a pleasure uh, connecting with you again. And you know, come, and thank you for taking the time out to come in and and uh, you know have a chat with us here in our lovely little cafe. Um, uh, what are you taking from COVID? What did you find in COVID that you don't want to let go of? Um, appreciating people, like as I showed you at the beginning, my cup. Um, appreciating the people that do good for us and also there are heroes but also appreciating the unsung heroes there are so many people out there that are unsung heroes that don't get recognition so um just appreciating people in general and 
appreciating the gift of life and realizing that we have to accept change. Um, change is part of us and that through change we grow. So, so that's really what I'm taking from it. But most of all, people are so, so valuable and to appreciate the heroes and the unsung heroes. Um, thanks very much. And um, as you see, one person has got the Guinness World Records, but behind me, invisibly, there's a team behind me helping me. So I'm very grateful to, for John for all he's helping. To my other running guides, Louis, Philip, Gillian, and Ed. And I suppose just as I close off and as you sh uh, shut down the cafe, I just want to say to the guests, are to the people that's been in the cafe today everybody has said that they've taken inspiration and the energy is high and the motivation is high while that energy and motivation is high make a commitment to yourself when you come off this call now write down something that you're actually going to do because i can guarantee that in a few hours that motivation will start to subside and if you genuinely believe that i am an inspiration make a call or make a commitment to do something. I don't know what you want to do. It can be big, small, but make a commitment to do something in your life. Uh, so that's my call to action for everybody who's been in the cafe today. And my final words will be to you, Cullum. Thanks very much for having me on as a guest and for all your hard work and for just connecting people over the last number of months and to all of your team for everybody. Um, so well done to everybody who's done superb work in putting together this series and I look forward to your next series and enjoy tonight and celebrate for all your hard work and thanks for having me on the show. We have a little surprise for you all. One of our regulars, James, has been working away, going back through all the recordings and he has created a lovely piece for us that he's going to read out in a moment. It covers, you know, things that we've all learned over 84, well, 83 shows, unless he's going to pop in a, a little bit from today, but over 83, oh, he is, 84 shows. Um, apparently, it's 5,000 minutes <laughs> over 17 weeks. So I'm just going to let James take over from here. And uh, away you go, James, if you need to unmute yourself, do you? With grateful thanks to The Rock, the monk, the princess, and of course, the host. So what did we do during a global pandemic? How did we cut it through COVID? What did this gathering of wisdom, of knowledge, of experience, of so many talents, of people worth meeting, explore together during this lockdown operation? Well, let it be said, we did not waste this pandemic this once in a century opportunity. We gave ourselves permission to do whatever we wanted during COVID and allowed it to fire us onto a better track as it challenged our dysfunctional relationship with uncertainty. We faced the problem like we have done for time immemorial. We put the kettle on, brought our cup to this virtual table and took a breath, a deep cleansing breath. We looked around and did the most human thing we ever do. We shared our stories. Stories of love and loss, birth and death, joy and sorrow, success and failure that actually turned out to be success delayed rather than success denied, turning the job from hell into wonderful new possibilities. It turns out we picked the right card, even when we think we picked the wrong one. We stayed busy, stayed in touch, stayed grounded, stayed at home, stayed in today. We did the next thing. We kept on keeping on in our own lane and led, followed, or got out of the way. We embraced our limitations, then reached for the stars. We made time to take time. We went back to basics. We did not panic. We listened to the news we needed to be informed and ignored the gossip designed to incite to panic. We held on to the humanity. We lived in the now because all we have for certain is now and gave ourselves permission not to have to do everything but to do whatever we want. We learned to control the controllable 
not to stress that which we could not control, because the only wrong way to do a day is to think that there is a right way. Nothing is the end of the world. At this time when we could not go out, we zoomed rather than zoomed around the world. All were welcome to the table, and new real friendships have now been made all around the globe, from all walks of life, of all faiths, beliefs, and none, but all seeking how to improve the life of even one fellow human being, just as a parent, partner, teacher, coach, mentor, or friend had helped us. Let us therefore resolve to be someone's compassionate leader, because the day of the dictator is gone, and all lives matter. We witnessed the capital of Ireland move from Dublin to Cork, and yes, even to Limerick. While New York is still our global capital, the green jersey was wrapped around us during this, and indeed all future staycations. We found the power to climb the highest mountains. We ran the wild Atlantic way, and from Scattery Island to the Serengeti. We took that first stride, even when we could not see that first step. Took that leap of faith, not because we had to, but rather because we got to take that opportunity. <clears throat> we were shown the beauties and wonders of the world, but just as important, we saw those places where there are still life-threatening difficulties, challenges and problems, and where one person can, indeed does, make a difference. You cannot engage a three-year-old through a phone, but nor can we live in a world where another three-year-old has to scavenge on a rubbish tip to survive. There is money in poverty and religion, but we cannot ignore something we cannot unsee. That disconnection is the root of all disease. Every child has a gift, and our job is to find it. They will be undocumented no more. The future is that undiscovered country. So what do we want out of life? What sage advice and sense of connection and creative community were shared among us that we can pass on to others? Visualize where you want to be and make a plan to get there because when you follow your dream, you cannot escape it. Never second guess a light bulb moment. Feel all the feelings because feelings buried alive never die. Feel the best you can. Do the best you can. Nobody is perfect, but it is enough to be perfectly imperfect. The fact is that we're all ordinary, but it is what we do that makes us extraordinary. And the difference is just that little bit extra. Completely and utterly believe in yourself. Do it, focus, be grateful, and be on purpose. And on those days when it all seems too much, when we must pause to rest, and regroup. We should hunker down like a hedgehog, immerse ourselves in nature, or even just borrow someone else's self-belief until we find our own once more. Be kind to yourself. There is no harm to press pause before we press send. Remember, good enough is often good enough. Be authentic, true to yourself, and treat others as you would wish to be treated. Treasure those stolen moments, pocket them. Remember no is a full sentence, so just say yes. This present will pass, so look to the future. Turn up the music, turn it up and remember that in order to land on your feet, you have to be up in the air twisting around. Wave goodbye to your inner critic and give yourself permission to let go. The trick will be to open a shutdown economy but a small key can open big doors. Innovation is exploding because of COVID-19. Creativity is contagious and so is compassion. COVID can go, but solidarity can stay. And perhaps we can then retain the best part of this slower pace of life. In the words of the great philosopher, Winnie the Pooh, life is a journey to be experienced, not a problem to be solved. This is the start. And we will move forward from right here and right now. No chain will bind us. We shall be too dangerous to ensure. We shall serve, not sell. Namaste.